according to the title that I've given you guys now. I, uh, we see it, we see it all the time, don't we? Uh, and it's amazing how we react and act when they put a toy out at Christmas time that your children or that your grandchildren want desperately bad. Or maybe they don't even want it at all. But somebody else has got it. And so now it's become a topic of discussion around your house. Maybe it's something that you don't want for them. Man, everybody's got it, right? And in order to boost the sales, uh, especially around that Black Friday has been solely based on this limited time scheme that we all fall victim to. Black Friday. The only day of the year that every Walmart, every Target, every superstore, every big box store like Lowe's, uh, Home Depot, uh, like I said, Walmart, Target, you name it, they look forward to Black Friday every year because it got its name because it's synonymous with the fact that it is the one day of the year they go from being in the red and they go to the black. It means it's the the first day of the year that they actually profit. And they'll profit so much in that one day that it'll carry them through the red all the next year. That's all based off a concept called limited time. Limited time. So you got Let's go. Come get out of the stores. Wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning. Hey, don't even go to sleep. Just stay up all night. Stand in line and wait because if you wait long and hard enough, they're going to open the doors to Wally World up and you're in line to get a Furby. Still amazed, Maria, when I think back to so many years ago when, okay, Furbies look like gremlins, first of all. And I, I think that the marketing strategy was that we have a bunch of leftover gremlins from way back in the day. What can we do? I know what we can do. Let's just change them up a little bit. We'll change their name. And so they unboxed all those stupid little gremlins and they just renamed them Furbies and repackaged them and put them back out on the market. People were like, oh, look at the Furby. Got the Furby. Everybody wanted a Furby. I was amazed even back then to watch the news stories where uh, uh, an 86-year-old elderly lady uh, beat another woman almost half to death in the aisle of a Target store in order to get a Furby for her great-grandchild. People got ball bats out, shot each other over a stuffed mechanical toy. I don't even know if they were mechanical back then. I guess they were, didn't they? Did their eyes bad or something. Oh, come on, don't y'all act like you didn't have a Furby. <laughs> I didn't. But everybody I know had Furby at some point because people were willing to die for them. And everybody went crazy over those Furbies. And everything that they sell, and that they sell it with the initiative of having continued business, it always starts out with this limited time. You ever listen to those guys on late night television? It's one of their most overused lines. QVC has made an entire channel out of using the term limited time. Hey, for a limited time, you can order this right now and get two extra pieces included with your useless order that we're going to deliver to your door. It'll do absolutely nothing for you. It'll benefit you in no way, but we've kept you captivated for long enough that you've watched this channel and we have convinced you that you need one. And you go, I do need one. I do. You melt it into that one-eyed devil and just consume it to the point you go, I'm going to order one. I'm going to order one. And then you say, no, I'm not. I'm going to be responsible. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. And then all of a sudden they say, but you better hurry. Because this is a limited time offer. Oh, well. <laughs> if you don't call within the next 45 seconds, this offer will vanish and vacate from your life forever. And so you expediently get on the phone when you die on your body. Oh, am I too late? Am I too late? Can I get a Furby? Oh, thank God. I see where it was limited time and I just didn't know if I was going to make it. 
and then you go back tomorrow night in the same commercial place with the same 45 second limited time offer and you think, wait a minute, uh, how limited is it? If they limit it every night, then it's not very limited, is it? We've all been victims to it. Hey, listen, I, I'm, not, I'm not prone to escape it myself. Mine is things like uh, silver coins or gold coins. Uh, because I think that they have something beyond just intrinsic value and that there's weight in gold and silver and they're not making any more of it. Uh, and so they say, well, you know, if you order now, you'll get this limited Donald Trump coin set for $19.99. And then you find out that they mass produce those and so they say, they legally sell them as a limited time offer because they run them in what's called series. They did the same thing with, uh, oh man, let me think of them over the years. Uh, there's a ton of them, right? Beanie Babies. Everybody thought that they were going to get a Beanie Baby that was worth $10 million. No, nope, there's only one of them. The guy that owned the company probably owns the Beanie Baby or has auctioned it off since then. Otherwise, they made $10 million more just like it. Uh, Boyd's Bears, we got a house full of them. The Boyd's Bear facility, the barn, they used to use the big show place. They gave tours and sold people Boyd's Bears through the tour and at the conclusion of the tour that you would go on. That building now, well, I think they've moved, uh, uh, they had tried to make it a, a 50s. 60s theme restaurant now, but that huge facility, five times bigger than this church, ten times bigger than this church, sat absolutely empty for years. And so I thought, well, these boy bears that we have, I mean, they were limited time. It said right there on the on the little card that you know they were going to discontinue the series. These bear stones, they're probably worth millions of dollars now because I don't believe it and I got to looking them up online Billy Joe you'll appreciate this uh, when we went through the NASCAR collectible phase on every box it said limited series this is a limited series you only get these for a limited amount of time and Boyd's Bears and NASCARs are two things that I own a lot of I and my wife own a lot of and I looked them up online. Some of those cars that my brother and I paid $25, $35, $50 dollars or more for, or some of the paraphernalia, if you will, that went with it, the clocks and the cards and the books and all that stuff, most of it you can look up online and it doesn't even carry the, the numerical value that you paid for it. Like I have cars, NASCARs and Boyd's Bears that I paid $25 for and you can go online and buy them brand new in the box for $18.99, $15.99. They went down in value! How can that be? Because it was for a limited time only! Was, the time was limited to how many of them they wanted to produce and how long they wanted to sell them. Limited time! I know that my brother is sitting back there and I know that he thought that he was going to have so many race car collectibles that as one retirement from the city one day that he had, I mean, he and I both, we treated those collectibles uh, with more value than gold because if it had been gold, we'd have tucked it away and hid it somewhere. But then race car collectibles, we was proud of them. So proud of them that when I finally got married to Heather, uh, in our first little trailer that we lived in, I had one bedroom that was completely decked out with nothing but NASCAR collectibles. And Heather said, that's going to be Chase's room. And I said, oh, not with all them race cars in there, it's fine. Oh, no, 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 no. Those are valuable. You have no idea. For a limited time. Limited time. Here's the funny thing, is that most of those things, their value is the only thing that is valued and it's for a limited time. 
Now, if you go back to my office, you'll still see some race car collectibles and some Elvis collectibles. And that's why I say, hey, don't beat yourself up. Your pastor has been susceptible to every idiotic thing that has came along that I thought, man, it's only for a limited time. As a matter of fact, if you go back in my office after service tonight, you'll see my new limited time praise. <laughs> Heather calls them my dolls. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they are called... What are they called? I got dolls stuck in my head now. They're not dolls. They're not dolls. Funko Pops. F-U-N-K-O. Funko Pops. Funniest story about Funko Pops. Um, I promise I'm going to get you to work here real quick. We're going to get out of here. I went, so they have, a, they have a new store called the $5 store. Some five and above. It's all the rage with the young kids. Man, my daughters wanted to go so badly to five and above. Five and below. Whatever. Who cares? Five and below. Whatever. It cost me a lot. I didn't get out of there for five and below. Not with two dollars. I got out of there for about five hundred and above. A five dollar junk that's laying all over my house or been thrown in the trash can since. But one of the things that was so funny, I took a picture of it on my phone because Heather was making fun of me and saying that I was a doll collector now. And my dolls are cool. I got Hulk Hogan and Mr. T in a limited package set. I got some cool stuff. You guys are making fun of me in your mind right now. As I went through five and below, now you know how the story is. They didn't have Funko Pops. And they didn't have a series. They had one boxed doll. One little box doll. And I picked it up and I looked at it because it was hilarious. It was a knockoff of a Funko Pop, but it looked so ridiculous. And then I turned the box sideways and read, the, do you know what the name of it was? Lamo. <laughs> Lamo is the name of Five Below's only Funko Pop that they carry. Well, at that point, I had no choice but just to laugh at myself and think how ridiculous I must look. And I looked at my wife and I said, They are dolls. I'm a doll collector. <laughs> so I took a picture of it and I put laughing faces, and it took her forever to get it. And I said, you'll love this, you'll enjoy this. And the message, she's like, that thing's stupid, it's just another doll. I said, no, you got to read the name, you got to read the name. And she said, I don't get it. I said, they're made by a company called Lamo. <laughs> For a limited time, you can get a Lamo pop at five and below. I said all that to get to this point. You guys, you know what, man? We spend a lot of time chasing after things that are considered to be limited time only, only to find out that they are lame-o yeah. after we have held on and collected them for far too long and cluttered up far too much of our stuff yeah. with things that have no monetary or spiritual value at all in our life. In the Old Testament, they would walk into my sister Julie's house and probably, uh, I would say probably somebody like Elijah or Elisha would have just took a rooster in her house and slit its throat and let it bleed out on her floor as they prayed for her. Because they would have called it idol worship. My sister has roosters everywhere. And I don't know why. It really doesn't make any sense to me because she loves cats. And I'm like, I don't get it. Every cat I know would try to kill your rooster. And you love cats and you love roosters. She wonders why I think she's weird all the time. Then she looks at me and says, well, you can like dolls. You're supposed to be a man. They're not dolls. They're not dolls. Limited time. And so here's the thing. This is the craziest thing, though, that when we look at the title and we think about, we think about things that are sold or produced or placed to us under the significance as uh, limited time. Listen to what the Word of God says in 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, verse 3. It says, And I was with you in weakness and in fear 
and in much trembling. You say, now, wait a minute. Uh, I don't understand uh, what that has to do with where you're going. Well, you will, uh, hopefully, here in just a moment, because I wanted to share this little story with you. We're going to hurry through this. But Susan Bach was an immigrant from Germany, and she often played chamber music with Albert Einstein and other prominent scientists. She said that Einstein, and some of you, you may or may not know this, uh, but this is good trivia stuff here. She said that Einstein, though an accomplished violinist, irritated his fellow musicians by not coming on in beat. She said in quotes, you see, Bach explained, he couldn't count. Einstein couldn't count. Einstein could project revolutionary theories about the cosmos, but he had difficulty with rhythmic counting. Oh, don't like these kids. They haven't learned it yet. They haven't got it yet. We have some who really think they're dialed in on it. They're not either. It's a process. You have to learn. We call people that are naturally gifted or born with those abilities savants. But not very often do you find individuals who will just sit down at a piano and listen to Mozart once and then play it. Now there are some people that uh, I think that, uh, like I think Abigail will absolutely be one of those individuals. And how, what a blessing that will be. If she just continues to touch the ivory on a piano. Because she has senses that you and I don't have. She can hear things that you and I can't hear. When she touches things, she feels things in touch that you and I don't feel. She'll be able to feel the vibration through the keys of the music. And so rather than read it, oh, I think it's... She's blessed with such a gift. You say, well, you know, she has no eyes. That's not a gift. Oh, yes, it is. Because she is seeing things in the world through an entirely different perspective than you and I are. Do you realize, I, mean, I, I know that, Mandy, you've thought about a lot of these things, but I was thinking the other day, do you realize that Abigail, except it be absolutely taught to her in the entirety of all the ugliness that exists, she'll have no idea what racism is. Most kids will figure that out. But she won't be able to identify whether one little boy or one little girl is good or bad based on their color, their religion. Once she grows older, she'll learn. She'll learn those divisive things that divide the world, just like every child learns them. But she's got a gift that is so special that I don't think that it'll allow her uh, to waller in any of those things very long because she'll always be able to say you don't see the world like I see the world. I think it's an amazing thing and to think about Albert Einstein I mean listen to this he's the guy that gave us the adage that said that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. We've quoted his mathematical knowledge and utilized it and used it to transform the world that we live in. Despite his limitation, he remained an enthusiastic musician. I think that's the greatest thing. It's when we stick it out sometimes because uh, we sometimes lament our limitations. We whine over them or we hurt because we feel jaded or cheated. But Einstein was enthusiastic in using his. And so we all have abilities. Let me get to the, the next part of the word that I'm going to hear because I, I promise you guys that I'm not going to be long. But I want, you, I want you to gather something out of this word tonight. We have abilities, but we're also afflicted with inabilities. We may be tempted to use our limitations as an excuse for not doing the things God has enabled us to do. You see, folks, here's the reality of everything that I'm going to give you, the scripture that I'm going to give you, the message that I'm
is going to preach is this. Folks, this is a limited time only deal that we are offering out of Momentum Community Church. It will cost you absolutely nothing. At least from this church, salesmen won't repeatedly call your phone or knock on your door and drive you absolutely insane to buy this product. It's a once for all, and once you have it, you don't ever have to extend the warranty on it. You don't have to buy backup plans. You don't have to buy insurance to cover. It is, was, and forever will be everything that you ever needed to own, all inclusive in one package was for a limited time only. And his name is Jesus. Yeah. You must ask him into your heart and into your life before you leave this earth. You must accept him as Lord and Savior before his imminent return when he busts the eastern sky open and the trunk will resound. And those who he loved and who loved him will be alive with him forevermore in Christ Jesus in the eternity that we call heaven. But it's a limited time offer. You don't get forever to get this deal. You only get the time that you have on this earth to make a resolve to say, I'm going to make that one time purchase. I'm going to buy it one time, once and forever into my life. I'm going to ask Jesus to be my Lord and Savior. They said that it costs absolutely nothing. Do you mean to tell me that I can ask Jesus into my heart and into my life and that I can come to church and it don't cost me a thing? That's absolutely correct, young man, young lady. That's absolutely correct, ma'am. Yes, sir. That's absolutely what I'm selling today. We don't want your money. We can utilize and use whatever you give us to help others out along the way, but we ain't here begging and picking for a dollar. It's absolutely free. There's no secret hidden cost, no shipping, no damage, no replacement. It forever is, forever was, and forever will be free to you, but it's only good for a limited time. Yeah. Oh. Limited time on. You better get it while the getting's good. Yeah. Because there is coming a day inevitably we won't be available anymore. Yeah. And I thought to myself, as crazy as we have acted for limited time offers, the absolute craziness that has surrounded us for things that will perish and fall apart, material things that will deteriorate and fall apart and leave us with absolutely nothing. You know, most limited time offers, uh, even the ones that they oversell, if they are of any value, do you know why they're of value? Because they've never been opened. They've never been used. Yeah. Yeah. You see, for most, most, a lot of people have old toys and stuff sitting around their house and say, <laughs> Well, wow, that's got to be worth something. I haven't seen one of those in years. And you take it to a toy collector shop, and he says, "Oh, rock 'em, sock 'em robots. Yeah, I love those. Uh, we get them in here all the time. Uh, do you got the box that it came in? Um, no, I just have the rock 'em, sock 'em robots. But look, they're in good shape. They're in good shape. Yeah, but everybody's got. I got all kinds of rock 'em, sock 'em robots. What I really need is the box that they came in, undamaged." untarnished, unhinged. Too often in life, we get too caught up in stuff and we won't open the package. So here's the other great thing about this limited time offer that I'm giving you today. Is that as soon as you purchase it, I want you to open it up. Because it will do nothing but increase in value the more you utilize and use it. I don't want you to put it on a shelf. I don't want you to box it up and put bubble wrap around it and shove it in a cedar chest somewhere. Oh no! This limited time offer that I'm giving to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I want you to open up His Holy Word everything that He's ever spoke. I want you to utilize and use it. I want you to get a Bible and absolutely wear it out because you ain't going to have to return it. Yeah. You don't have to return it. You don't have to protect it. Because the offer I'm giving you is protecting you. It's helping you not only escape a devil's hell, 
but to live a holy life before a holy God. It'll help you learn how to love. It'll help you learn how to make things in your life last that you haven't figured out or don't have the ability to make last. You see, we sell ourselves short for limited time offers. But the truth of the matter is, is that just because we may not be gifted like Albert Einstein to speak in public or to sing in a choir, it doesn't mean that we can sit on the spiritual sidelines doing nothing. This free gift that I'm offering for this limited time is a gift that we need to use, church. We need to get it out of the box and run it through its courses, put it through its paces. How much more fun, how, how hurt was that child who waited all Christmas, all the way through Christmas morning to receive a Furby? Oh, so excited. Yeah, I got one. <laughs> I got Furby. I mean, you see the videos, people cry. Over gifts that they get for Christmas that really are so insignificant when it comes to the world that we live in. Can you imagine that little child? Can you imagine little Livy or Aspen? We gave them the gift that they wanted. I mean, it was the only thing that they circled in the, the JCPenney or the Sears catalog. I know we don't have those anymore, but it's the only thing that they shown you on their mobile device. How about that? They found it and they pointed it out to you all the time. How much the more how, what kind of parent, and yet there are parents that do this. What kind of parent would give your child the gift that they have desired and wanted so deeply and then say, okay, now that you've opened it, give it here, i got to put it up. Because it's going to be worth money someday. That Furby is going to be a value someday. That's why collectors want boxes. Because most kids with any sense said, over my dead body, you're taking that Furby away. I'll cry and throw a fit like I've never cried and throw before in my life. I'll kick my feet. I'll tear the Christmas tree down. I'll throw ornaments at Grandpa. Give me that Furby. And they rip the box open and they get it out and they play with it for five minutes and then they throw the Furby over in the corner. And they go for the cardboard boxes. Merry Christmas. It's kind of the way we do spiritually these things in our life. This thing that we call Christ Jesus. Some of us are so protective of it that we won't let anybody else unwrap it, utilize it, or use it. As a matter of fact, we have whole denominations, churches everywhere that think that they are the way, the truth, and the life. When actually the Word said that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And there's no way to the Father but by Him. And so they package themselves up in four walls in this beautiful piety wrapped with a bow and they say well we got it here uh, but you can't use it you don't look right you don't smell right oh, don't touch it you got grease on your fingers you're going to ruin its value have you ever seen someone around something that was truly collectible and the way they act the nervous tension they exude when you act like you're going to touch it don't do it! Here, spit my mouth! Don't do it! Don't spit on my collectible! That would be crazy! And yet churches in the world that we live in today, that's exactly where we're at as a church today, folks. We've, had, we've held on to Jesus so tightly and protected Christ to the point that he has become of no value outside the box. Because we never let anybody see him. We never let anybody see us utilizing or using him. We always keep him packaged up and tucked away. And the only time we'll pull him out is when we're showing another collector. Be careful with it. I, I, I bought this when it was on sale for a limited time. And that's the way we treat Christ Jesus in our life. But the reality of the word of God is that God wanted us to utilize and use him in every action, in every day, in every aspect of our life. Yeah. I think that I said this once before, and I really mean this, that 
I want to use all of Jesus that I have in this lifetime. Once I received him into my heart and into my life, I wasn't worried about what other people said. It's, oh, you shouldn't highlight your Bible. You shouldn't write in it like that. Why? That Bible ain't sacred. As a matter of fact, it's the number one selling book in the world every year. That means that they've made so many copies of this. It was made. God gave us Bibles in such abundance that, man, we can rail through them dudes right in and mark one. And guess what? There's always going to be another one somewhere. They're not in limited supply. But folks, let me tell you something. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And for those of us that are going home to be with the King, if you think the world that we live in is bad now, I pray that you don't have to try to survive. Yeah. I pray that you don't have to try to survive when there is tribulation that is taken on the earth. Because I can guarantee you in the tribulation, one of the things that will be very hard to come by will be the Word of God. It will be in limited supply. As a matter of fact, I almost believe that it will be limited in supply only to the few that were brought up in the church, raised around people who preached the Word of God, had a grandma that told them about Jesus all the time, and that value of placing that in their head all the time, it may be the only thing that they have left to hold on to come the Great Tribulation. Okay, I've kept you guys long enough. Let me read this. You guys get what I'm preaching today? Please say amen. amen. And so verse 24 in the 25th chapter of the book of Matthew says, and this was uh, an illustration that Jesus gave us. Then he which had received one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou hast sown, and gathering where thou hast not straw. And I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Wow, wait a minute. Read that sounds like what you were just describing about collectibles. Go ahead and give me a little music, Dale. Uh, it is. It's actually where I got this message from. This passage of scripture. I saw a title. I saw a word that said limited, but useful. And I said, oh, limited time only. I get it. I get it. Verse 25 said, and I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Whoa. There thou hast, that is thine. Jesus said, well, wherever you hid it, you better go find it. That's all you're getting. I gave you the opportunity to have exceedingly and abundantly what you could ever enjoy, but you took what I gave you and you hid it away and you wouldn't let anybody else, you wouldn't share it, you wouldn't utilize it and use it to help somebody else out, you wouldn't give of it so somebody else could enjoy it. You know, rare art. One of the reasons that it is rare is because oftentimes it's one of a kind. And we treat things that are rare and available for a limited time only. We hang them in museums. We put them under protective glass in climate controlled environments. I saw it just where I think it was uh, last week, week before last, where Somebody, I don't even remember what museum it's in, but the Mona Lisa. There's a picture of my mom was named after. Somebody had took a cake. And I, I think, I'm not trying to be mean, but I think it was during the whole Pride Week thing, whatever. Uh, and they took a rainbow colored cake. And I don't know how you'd get by security or whatever with that, but they threw it at the Mona Lisa. Little did they know that it's behind protected bulletproof glass that is crystal clear. It almost looks like it's sitting right out there where you can touch it. But I, I was kind of neat to watch one of the curators from the museum come out with just a regular old roll of napkins, nothing special, and start to wipe the cake off. And as he wiped the cake off, that beautiful image that has been sacred for so long started to be revealed again through the smears and 
through the smudges, the more he wiped, the more that beauty and that art that is the Mona Lisa came back out for everybody to enjoy. You see, sometimes in life, we'll let one individual, one situation, one circumstance, one statement mar up everything. But God didn't create us to do that, church. He didn't allow us to have Jesus in our heart and in our life. That as soon as somebody comes by and throws a little cake, that we are obstructed from everybody else to see. Yeah. That we're smeared and useless. No, 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 no. You see, God's got the paper towel. He created you for a limited time only. Yeah. You are precious in the eyes of God. Yeah. More precious than any painting, any portrait hanging in any museum on the face of the earth. Yeah. You are of more value than it is. And God wants to remind you when you see things like that. Folks, we need to start looking at things through spiritual eyes. Yeah. That's what pastors and preachers do. When I saw that Mona Lisa and I saw the cake all marred, I was just like everybody else. I was like, How in the world did they let them get through security and destroy that piece of art that's been around longer than anybody I've even known has been alive? How could they do that? And then I seen the guy come out in the suit with a paper towel. And the more he wiped, the more her smileless image was revealed again. I thought, ah, oh, I get it, God. That was for me today. Because there's going to be naysayers and backbiters and haters. They're going to throw cake. They're going to look to mar and smear up what you've given me. But I remember the sales pitch. I got it, but it's for a limited time only. I ordered it. I received it into my heart and into my life. And so now that I have it, it's under a warranty that says that it'll never leave me. It'll never forsake me. But there's no amount of tarnish or soil that God can't wipe it off. That he can't clean it off and expose the real beauty for the world to see again. Let me tell you something, folks. Speaking for myself, my beauty only exists a little bit out here. But if you don't know me, you think what you want to think about me. You can listen to the stories and the old war stories that people tell. But you have to know me to know that there's something in here that I got that a lot of people don't got. I love you like nobody else will love you. I'll watch your back like nobody else will watch your back. I'll fight with you when you need to be fought with. I would love nothing more than to fight for you when you can't handle it all on your own. Limited time only, folks. This offer exists for a limited time. You see, Del, can I skip over and we'll close tonight as you stand with me in the book of Romans. Romans chapter 12 verse 6 says having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us whether prophecy let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith you see God didn't give us this limited time gift for us to store it away and to allow it to collect us to only bring it out and to show it every once in a while he gave us this gift to absolutely wear it out this limited time offer, he gave it to us so that I've said so many times, I think that we should live full and die empty. I want to die like my mama died. I want to wallow around with my knees, and my hips hurting, my back aching, my heart failing. But everybody that meet her says, I love your mom. I love your mom. She's such a sweet lady. I love your mom. 
And I think to myself, wow, some of the things I've seen that woman go through. You see, not everybody got to see it. But what she did let everybody see was the limited time offer that God gave her. For a limited time only, you too can have and share what God gave to all of us through His Son, Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. Anybody under the sound of my voice with every head bowed and every eye closed when I ask this just quickly tonight? Have you? Do you? Want to take part in this limited time offer? You see, a message like this merits at least asking, even with a small crowd. Do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? If you don't, tonight, this limited offer is being extended to you and you only. If you lift your hand, just quickly, I'll pray for you. I won't come to where you're at. I don't want to embarrass you. I pray that you know Christ Jesus as Lord and Savior. If you lifted your hand, you shot it up for just that second. Pray this prayer and receive it. A prayer that says, God, forgive me. Forgive me that Jesus had to die for the wrong that I've done. Come into my heart and into my life. Change me. And allow me to offer the love and the mercy and the grace that you've given me. To everyone I meet in this world that you've given us for this limited time. Father God, I love you and I praise you and I thank you. I accept you into my heart and into my life as my Lord and Savior. And then for the rest of you that remain here tonight that know Jesus as Lord and Savior, Father God, I pray that we'll not tuck him away and hide him. We'll not practice perfect piety and just polish it off every now and then, but one that will extend the olive branch of love and mercy and grace and that you'll utilize us and the beauty that is in us, that is Christ Jesus, to reach a lost and dying world before time runs out. And Father, for that love that you show us, for your mercy, for your grace, for the care that you give to each and every one of us, may we give you praise and thanksgiving always in Jesus' name. Amen.